What does overworking mean to you? I believe that's the first question to ask to find your solution to the problem. And I expect I'll see some reactions from you guys in the comment section after you're done watching. Six tips to stop overworking watercolor coming later on in the video. But first, you need to hear this because that's just gonna help you improve way faster than just me giving you tips. So something happened that really took me off guard after I repainted a new, lighter, and fresher version for this two-year-old overworked painting. I had already outlined each point that illustrate exactly how I did it to share with you. But then I decided to go watch the most popular videos on that topic to see if I really had something new and interesting to bring to the table. The videos I watched about overworking watercolor are all excellent and informative, there's no question about that. But I was shocked because I realized that the tips they give in these videos have little to do with what I want to share today. And that really made me feel like an imposter for a second, like someone who doesn't even know what overworking is. Until it hit me that overworking might just not mean the same thing to everyone. And that because of that, there's no one solution, no one size fits all, and no definite do's and don'ts for that problem. I would even go as far as saying that some of the don'ts could actually look pretty good depending on who it is who's managing them. For example, it seems for some people, maybe for you, overworking has to do more with the way you handle paint and water on paper, repetitive brush strokes in one area, and trying to fix something while it's drying. And that totally makes sense, but what gave me food for thought here is that to me this would be more of a water control or a paint to water ratio problem rather than overworking itself, it could lead to overworking, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. To me, overworking would translate in a painting that's looking either too detailed, too muddy, too harsh, too controlled, or too heavy in general. And it could be something else for you. So when you put it the way that I just did, you can see how overworking can stem from so many different things. And now we have that awareness around that topic, now we're able to ask ourselves another question, which would be something like, what do I not like in my overworked paintings? What do I want to fix there? To find out, you really have to pinpoint what elements in the paintings make it look overworked to you, and then look at artists you admire and see what they're doing in their paintings that maybe you're not. And I'll show you how I transformed this old painting using that principle. To me, it feels harsh and heavy. It's okay, but it looks more like gouache, and I never shared it before for that reason. I didn't like that a lot of edges here are really harsh, colors are mostly dark and dull, and there's a little bit too much detail. And the kind of watercolor painting that I wanted to achieve is more like the new version. It feels lighter, it's realistic, because that's how I like my paintings to be, but you can clearly tell it's a watercolor painting. So these are my own personal tips to fix this kind of painting and turn it into something more like this. First, I approached the painting as a whole instead of focusing on things like the ornament, the tree, the bouquet effect. In the old one, I was focusing on those things and that's why I preserved the pink ornament and the bouquet effect because they stand out so much in the photo. The problem with that is that in a painted version, it's easy to enhance them to the point they end up looking like an unnatural part of the painting, depending on your level of technique and awareness. And what's been working for me to avoid to fall into that trap and get more of a watercolor look in my realistic paintings is to wet the whole sheet and apply a base layer on everything, but keep working on it so most of the detail and color values stay soft. I know that I can get some definition later on in the painting if I need to, and it will be easier to add those touches with a light hand when most of the painting is already on paper. So after wetting the whole sheet, I block in the main colors quickly. If my paper is still wet, I start adding darker colors to build up contrast and realism little by little. The more the painting dries, the more I add pigment to my colors to keep that water to paint ratio balanced. That's important. When you preserve a shape right away like I did in my old version, it's really hard to remove the harsh line from that. You can't really hide it unless you add a strong shadow and you miss out on a soft watercolor look because of it. Then you also have to paint the whole thing you have masked from scratch, usually on dry paper. 
And then it becomes easier to overload it with details, I find, because we can be so fixed on the idea this needs to pop, like the ornament would need to pop on the page here. There are paintings with which it's going to be more convenient to preserve certain areas, and if you're comfortable, it can be done skillfully enough to avoid overworking. That's why I was saying there are no firm don'ts about doing something. But in general, I recommend to paint as much as you can on wet, to really master that skill first until you are comfortable doing it. Being a realism artist, I wanted to control everything and it's been a learning curve to learn to do it that way on wet, but that's really something you can master and just having awareness around this is a huge advantage. Another way to avoid overworking a painting is to spot the different colors in the reference and make sure to add them and it's even better if they're on the luminous side. Because remember that in your painted version, you have the power to change anything that you like compared to the reference. And I think with watercolor, adding luminous colors is one of those things. We have an example here with the ornament from the reference photo. It looks like it's just pink at first glance. And in my old painting, I made it just pink. And I added a bunch of layers and shadows to make it look realistic. Because pink alone was boring. And I lacked a variety of colors, so the only way I found at the time that I could get that variety in was to increase contrast with strong shadows, and it ended up looking like gouache. In the new painting, I knew if I added more colors, it would look more pleasing to the eye and watercolor-like, because I wouldn't need to overwork that much with shadows. There would already be enough going on. So I enhanced the reference a bit more, but you can see a tad of yellow in there if you look closely. This technique of making it look better through subtle color additions is really awesome with watercolors to make them look interesting and fresh. And what you can do is you can train on a simple thing like an apple or a pear to get started. And it's difficult, it's a learning curve, but remember you have that superpower to just be aware of that. Another thing you can do to avoid overworking is to keep some natural highlights visible, meaning paper white highlights, so that the painting feels brighter and so shadows don't need to be as strong and heavy as they were here, for instance, in my old painting. For example, here, I leveraged the fact the paper was wet to lift color and get some of the highlights back, but subtle enough that my art still looks realistic. I did it in the background with the bouquet effect, but also in the ornament and even those lighter parts I could see were there on the tree. Lifting color means you won't have to add a ton of white gouache like I did in my old painting, and also you won't have to add very strong shadows to balance with the lack of natural highlights. I did that again later. I lifted paint on dry paper by just wetting the desired areas, and I got myself a natural bouquet effect that I deliberately made less visible than it is in the reference. I have a power tip for you when you like to work in layers and you enjoy realism like I do. Sometimes the paper dries before you can add all the colors and depth that you want in your painting. In that case, I'll just dry the sheet completely and wet the whole thing again and keep working like I was before the paper dried. If you're one of my students on Skillshare, you would see me do that a lot. And what I've noticed is that applying clear water to a painting, even if it's almost done, it will soften everything and make each part melt into the piece better, especially if you have harsh lines here and there. So I use this technique a lot in galaxy paintings, for instance, and I'll place a link to my best class on that topic in the description of the video. So to keep a light hand on shadows doesn't mean to add only subtle shadows. Having strong ones in the painting also contributes to realism a lot. But too many strong shadows can burden the painting like it's the case in my old painting. I added a few strong shadows while my paper was wet, so I knew they would dry lighter and they would feel softer. And later, I added more on dry paper, but I managed to keep it reasonable because I had enough to go from. To keep a soft look in the ornament, I even softened the darker edges manually with a clean and damp paintbrush before the added paint dried. Adding strong shadows helps a subject stand out more on a light background like this one, but you can find a good compromise between it standing out and it looking too obvious with that softening hard edges technique. Something I struggled with for a long time was ruining my paintings by adding too much white gouache. 
It's what I like to do the most in my painting. I mean, not to ruin them, but to add white gouache. And it's so easy to get carried away. I also would mix it to watercolors too much to create pastel shades, like here in the ornament. And I found over time, this really makes the watercolor muddy when you go back and forth with gouache on top of watercolors. So we must try and avoid it or keep a very light hand on it, like in my newer painting. When it comes down to it, I find my tips and all others I've heard all come from planning from your painting carefully. Add awareness around the things I talked about here and you're on the right track to fix your problem. And if you're still in the beginner stages, this video right here will help you up your water control game if that's something you struggle with so you can work on wet paper for longer like I did in today's painting. Thank you for watching and see you next time.